Let's see if it's worked out well for us. We'll see. Ooh, hello everybody. It's Dr. Gina. How are you doing? So this is really interesting because what I'm seeing is like lots and lots of glare. And I, I know I shine bright, but I don't think I shine that bright. So we're going to see what we can do over here. Um, I'm in the kitchen. So let's see. Hey, I think that helped us out a lot. We still got a little bit of light glare, but it's it's better. So sorry about that. But, you know, we're in the kitchen and this is what happens when we're here in here with all these super bright lights. So what I might do, I think I have like tons of light on, but sorry, I don't know what I can do about all this, um, all this light. Let's see. Let's see if I can. I don't, I don't know if that helps. I turned one of our lights off, but uh, I'm not quite sure if that helps us out. But either way, this won't take us too long. I'm hoping that's going to be really helpful for you guys. Why is that? Well, because I know quite a few folks right now, especially when we think about this sensory season, are just like, oh, my goodness, we're going to be doing things uh, with family, with friends, and, and it could just get potentially overwhelming. And what am I going to do? And I talk to people about 90 minutes a day of self-care. Well, who am I? I'm Dr. Virginia. What I do is I help people transform their lives by developing a mindset for growth and success. And you can probably see my map in the background. We do homeschooling. And one of the things we talk about is traveling to different places for mission trips or just praying for folks in a variety of areas. And when we talk about traveling, some of us get incredibly excited about being able to travel and go to different places. Others of us are just like counting down the days. Um, until you know we can get back home <laughs> so either way whichever whichever family member we have whether they're ones that are ready to go out and travel or they're ones that are just like i want to stay at home and relax we try to do things that are going to be calming and keep everybody relaxed yes i am always down with going to the spa i feel like i could go to the spa every day um some weeks i have when i've had major events coming up i actually go to the spa almost every day before to try to keep my emotions in check and kind of give me an opportunity but there are those uh, friends of mine and, and, and clients that I work with who are telling me there is no way I can get 90 minutes a day of self-care. And I talk to them about very basic things like sitting down for tea time. Tea time could be anywhere from five minutes to 15 minutes. OK. Or, or, or sitting at your favorite um, bistro or coffee shop and just kind of chilling, hanging out, uh, doing something really um comfortable and enjoyable for you. It doesn't have to take a long time. You know, 15 minutes there, 20 minutes here, 30 minutes there can all add up to 90 minutes a day. And that's a whole nother talk. But I've talked to people about doing things that can give them a sense of satisfaction, just small things. And I'm going to show you how you can do that with just washing the dishes. Yeah, I know. Who knew washing the dishes could be so such a wonderful sensory experience, a sensual experience, not in a, you know, intimacy kind of like guy girl way or whatever. Um, but I'm talking about sensual from the root word in terms of sensory, especially when we're think thinking about the Greek. So I got a couple of things here and I'm not going to really harp on products because this is not a product review or anything like that. No, I don't get paid for any of this stuff that I'm doing in terms of in terms of products. But one thing that I like to do, and I remember my mother um, showing me this years and years ago, but I'm getting ready to wash the dishes. And what I literally just did is I used this Satin Hands product. And it's basically some yummy good smellies, but it's a hand scrub, which you could actually make. You could make a basic hand scrub with whatever kind of um, material that you want. Use your very best uh, yummy, good smelly fragrance. And, you know, I get it all lathered up here. And yeah, it looks a hot mess. Hey, how are you doing? So we got Periscope folks and we got YouTube folks. So, so good to see you. And, and, and thanks so much for joining. But I got this very basic scrub. And we're using all five senses here, okay? Because clearly I can see, you know, the, the yuck. <laughs> but, you know, I'm also being able to kind of enjoy the feel of this on my hands. And again, this is a basic scrub. It's, you know, take your favorite soap um, that you like, a uh, hand soap hand, or hand cream, um, and add in a couple of nice granules. And you can use a variety of things. I, I know of Epsom salts that can be added to things like this. The magnesium from Epsom salts can be helpful as well especially if you've got any aches or pains. But, you know, this has a little bit of um, uh, some granularity too, which I think, again, it's probably salt. And, you know, this is really nice. Or sugar, it might be sugar, I'm not sure. But either way, it doesn't really matter. The bottom line is I am just smelling this goodness. It smells wonderful. It smells like apricot. It looks like apricot. And I am really giving myself a little bit of a mini massage here. And this is all in preparation for washing the dishes. Do I do this a lot? No. Do I wash the dishes a lot? No, that's because I have a dishwasher. And I'm not talking about the GE that's sitting next to me. I'm talking about my teenage daughter. She's my dishwasher. <laughs> uh, 
Um, and uh, every now and again, we'll have guests that come in and they're just like, I look and the dishes are washed, especially if it's someone like my mom. I look over and dishes are washed. I'm like that's the dishwasher's job. Um, but I'm actually giving myself a little bit of hand massage. You put your hands together, turn them inside out. Now, this is for people in the steeple, but this way. And guess what? That thumb is a perfect, perfect for massaging right there. And you just kind of massage your hands a little bit, okay? Doesn't take a whole lot, guys. This doesn't take a whole lot of time. And this can be during the dishes. This can be a break in the middle of the dishes. You know when you're waiting for that pan to soak? Yeah, I've got a lasagna pan here, and it has to soak. Another story on that to make your life a little easier. Um, that's another That's another conversation. But, you know, I am literally just letting, just letting all of this, the day's stress and debridement just wash right off away. Okay, then I've got my nice little warm water here. The warmer the better for me. I really like it warm. Um, not a lot of people like it that warm, but I do. I'm just rinsing this off my hands. And guess what? I'm feeling the water, the way the water just rinses off. And I like to play it in my dishwater. Um, my son does that. I think my daughter does it too. But again, you're using all five senses here. I can hear the water running. I love the water. And so I can just kind of imagine that I'm here washing dishes. I could also close my eyes and I can smell a lot of great smells right now. But I'm just imagining that this water is running over my hands, not here in this kitchen. But honestly, I'm thinking about when I went to Chilchimbato Native American Reservation and there was this beautiful, um, it was a dam that was connected a ways away with the lake. And I remember going and looking at the bottom of it and it just seemed bottomless. It just kept going and going and going. And I remember looking into it and just kind of running my hands through the water. And I just thought that was the most wonderful thing in the world. So that's where I just went for a moment in my mind. And I'm still, this is, look, this is still the same, <laughs> the same satin hands, which now my hands feel ultra smooth. And if I was giving my, my hands a little bit of a, uh, some therapy here, then I would probably just rinse it off, put on a little bit of ammonia cream or something and go with it. But we're still washing dishes, right? So here is the secret for the dishes. I try to surround myself with sensory experiences if I can. So especially during this time when it's going into the fall and the winter, I like good smelling. So I actually have a candle behind me. You probably can't see it. But I have a candle burning um, and it's a nice foresty scent that's burning. Usually I try to have something like pumpkin. We've got an apple cider somewhere around here in another room, but I don't want a conflict smell. So there's another room that's got apple cider and cinnamon. And then in here we've got a nice little foresty pine scent, which I think is pretty good. Okay, but the main thing for the dishes. So I've done the satin hands. Like I said, I don't do this every time. Uh, I think I've done it twice this week so far, um, just because it's relaxing for me and I don't mind doing it at all. You know, if I'm doing a little a little fun time with my son, he loves washing dishes and I think this is fun. So here's the thing. I used to hate washing dishes. And did you know that in America, at least, according to a Better Homes and Gardens study uh, several years ago, that the third most hated chore is washing dishes? And we went around the room in a group of women uh, that I was in not too long ago. And guess what? Washing dishes came up as the number one among that group, the number one for like, I don't know, five out of the 10 or so people that were in there. So let me tell you something. Again, not a ma major product review, but I will tell you. So I'm not going to really put it up to the screen, but I will tell you, this is my secret weapon. Okay. I just got this like last week and I love it. But um, I... When the folks around here wash dishes, they can wash with whatever they want. Dawn, palm olive, ivory, whatever. Ajax, I don't care. Doesn't matter. But I'm a stickler for how it smells. So even before I leave the store, I want to know what it smells like. I really like more organic, natural uh, things or natural soaps and things. So if it's got something that's more organic or natural and it doesn't have a whole bunch of chemicals, and definitely not pesticides and things like that in it. I am definitely all about that. And I'm going to use that to the fullest extent that I possibly can. But when I'm washing it, it's just, guess what? I want something that smells really nice. So I'm usually going for something like even my hand soap over here. It's bamboo and lotus blossom. You know, it's got to really smell nice because I'm washing my hands a lot. I'm washing my hands. I want to smell goodness around me. So I'm really particular about what I get. So I'm smelling the bamboo and lotus. That's nice for washing my hands. But for the dishes, here's my secret. I use these organic um, dish soaps. 
Okay, I just got these, but I have some other ones that I had before. But this one is Ginger Pomelo by Caldria. But those are like the secret sauce. And I don't let everybody have them. I hide them. I know, how sad is that? But I do. I take these and I put them underneath the sink. And when I wash the dishes is what I use. But everybody else, these are the random people that I love. <laughs> but when they're washing dishes, let me tell you, they waste a lot of dish soap around here. Um, or they don't use any. And I'm like, ah, why is there stuff still on the dishes? It's like, did you use dish soap? Um, but no, that's just training. You know, that's part of training the children where they should go because um, they may not understand. Uh, so we have to do that training period. But seriously, when I'm using it, I usually will have my own little special dish soap somewhere. Um, or like my daughter, she really likes this particular dish soap because she likes to pour a lot in there sometimes. Um, yeah, again, I think it's more playing around. Um, but then I have sent her back in the store. Thank you for the heart and like, I appreciate that. I have sent her back in the store and said, I don't want that. Get, get this other one, you know? And then I'll ask her, okay, what scent is it? And I do like citrusy things. Um, when I wrote the book last year on depression, uh, I was really impressed with how effective citrus essential oils can be to help with depression and anxiety. So I wrote about that um, in the book. And uh, I've ever since then, I've reminded myself to try to keep something that's citrusy. Not only is it a good cleanser. Thank you so much for joining. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, but not only is it a great cleanser uh, and degreaser, but the citrus can be very helpful. The essential oils. Now, in studies, when we look at essential oils in studies, uh, typically what we're doing is we're looking at pure essential oils that are diffused over a period of time. The person sitting there and they're getting access to and they're smelling the diffuser over, over a period of time. But when we're talking about, you know, sitting here smelling this, yes, there are essential oils in all of these that I'm using. There are essential oils in them, but clearly it's not as much as a person in this study because they would be exposed to, like I said, 30 minutes of diffuser right there. And this is just, you know, a couple drops of essential oil in 16 fluid ounces. Um, when, I mean, when we're talking about this, we're probably talking about what, 13 fluid ounces of dish soap and everything else. And then, only, and, and then only a couple of drops of essential oil, including grapefruit, basil, aloe vera, it's not an essential oil, but still ginger, ginger root, also not an essential oil, but still we like it. Smells great and it's helpful and it's making the dishwasher go oh, so much faster. And every now and again, I'll just take a nice deep breath in, deep breath out. My little diary area, not diary, but journal, I just write, take a nice deep breath of the spirit in and exhale, praise out. I had a friend of mine ask me what that meant and I explained it to her. Like, oh, that's great. I should try that. And I said, sure. I have my lovely flowers that my uh, I was going to say betrothed, but no longer betrothed, now united, uh, got for me earlier. They smell wonderful and they look great as well. So we've gone through at least three senses, I think we've gone through four. We've, oh no, three. We've gone through uh, feeling, you know, feeling the water, hearing the water, smelling the essential oils, four, right. um, and, and sight. So I like seeing bubbles in my water. I like uh, using sight for all these different things. So this was just me popping in quick because I still have many more dishes to do. But yes, I will default if there are too many of them to the dishwasher, the real one, <laughs> um, or to uh, ingrain character and build up character. We'll have the, the other one. Uh, go ahead and wash the dishes. But I did want to share how enjoyable it can be. So hopefully you will make your third worst chore or number one, if you're one of the, like the ladies in my group, uh, third worst chore. The reason they gave was that you have to do it so often. So even, even I said, even above cleaning the toilet, they were just like, I mean, if you don't have someone that, that does that for you, and they said, no, even cleaning the toilet, because you don't have to do it every so often. But it's like dishes, you're doing them two or three times a day. So yeah, I guess that, that could be a pretty hated chore if you're having to do it that many times. Someone listed dusting recently because they said dusting. But here was my thought about those hated chores, okay? So we're not going to do a scope on, on every hated chore. I just figured we'd do dishes because that was high up there. And it used to be my worst chore. 
But what I would say is for some of these other ones that we don't really like, again, surround yourself with a sensory experience. So for washing the other areas in the house, I have, you know, we have dish soap here, but I also have the, the nice spray. All the sprays that I use either have essential oils in them um, or something close to the essential oil. Again, remember something natural. Um, so flowers, even if it's not the essential oil from a particular bark or tree or herb, you know, we might use something that actually has flowers in it or flower essence in it, okay, which can be very similar. We will use that because I think that's a wonderful way to get a sensory experience in your everyday. I mean, seriously, for those people that tell me I absolutely have no time for self-care, I'm like, Psh, no, you got time to do dishes, right? Or do other household chores. Why not infuse some self-care into your household chores? Thank you so much for inviting your followers. I appreciate it. So infuse things like this into your household chores. Get, you know, even if not everybody in your house is gonna get the the she she dish soap. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Use the regular dish soap and let that sit on your countertop. Save the she she essential oil dish soap just for you <laughs> during your sensory moments. I do it. Okay. And everybody gets the hand soap because it just stays out, but I make sure that have the stand hand soap that, you know, like, uh, again, this is a naturally derived cleanser. The hand soaps have got lots of really nice, yummy, good smells to them. I love that. So for anything clean, you can do that. Okay. All right. Awesome. Thanks so much for emailing it. I appreciate that. Let me know. That's wonderful. So let's talk about, okay, let's talk about the dreaded ones that I saw. The dreaded ones that I saw on, the, on that recent survey, one was a UK survey talking about Americans, and the other one was a Better Homes and Gardens survey, again, talking about Americans. So some of the other chores that are, are greatly disliked, of course, cleaning the toilet. Hey, I'm a Jim. Thanks for joining. Uh, of course, things like cleaning the stove, uh, mopping, um, doing the windows, and uh, I think one was dusting. OK, so let's go through each of those and, and think about ways that you can make them sensory experiences and pleasant. Obviously, again, if you're talking about cleaning a surface, so even if it's your stove, you know, again, I would say make sure that you've got a nice cleanser that's got some great smells to it. OK, um, again, this is ginger pomelo, but I also have one. Uh, I think I saw I had a rose water. This one here that I have is bamboo and lotus. So it doesn't just have to be one of those little plug in things that you have that makes the whole house smell nice. Make the area that you're cleaning smell extra nice as well. OK, also decluttering that area is going to make you feel a whole heck of a lot better. I know I feel much better in my kitchen when it's not when it's completely clutter free. I really do. OK, um, what's another thing uh, as it related to to the dusting? When I saw that, the reason it was noted as being the most um, unpleasant was because the person basically said, you know, I have to do it all the time. I just finished dusting and I have to dust again. Why do I have to dust again? OK, and the person was, was not happy about having to dust again. And so one thought would be, and I think this is great because it's going to do a couple of different things, but spray your duster. And these are just little tips and tools. Spray your duster with a mix of um, a, a, a mist mix. So use some sterile water and a couple of essential oils, likely something like a lemon or orange. Because, again, not only do they smell great, not only do they help elevate the mood, but they're also excellent degreasers, right? You cannot lose with this. Spritz them on your, your duster. You're going to do a couple things. Because it's spritzed, it's going, not the very first time you dust, not the first swipe, but maybe the second or third swipe, okay? All of us dust and you swipe a couple times. I don't dust a whole lot, guys. Um, I have a professional duster for that, and she's great. But anyway, you know, spritz it a couple times. Spritz it with that uh, mist and the essential oils. And so every time I do this for the fan. So when it's seasons changing, you go from one circle the one way for cool and the other circle the other way for, for hot. Um, just spritz it on the duster. And when you're spritzing it, guess what? You're getting some of that extra dust off because of the, the mist. But you're also leaving a little bit of extra essential oil on. So the very first time, especially, that you go to spin that fan, you're going to smell. You're going to enjoy it. You're going to enjoy that dusting experience. So that was from my mom who said that they didn't like the dusting because that was just uh, uncomfortable for them to have to think about going back and dusting again and again and again. OK, so you don't have to do that next time. What's another thing that might be really helpful for you, especially for talking about the, um, uh, the toilet area? 
uh, give your do yourself a favor and calculate seriously. Calculate if it's worth you doing it all the time. It might be worth the expenditure to have someone come in once a month and help do those chores that you absolutely detest. Okay, if you can outtask other things, why not outtask that? I mean, I'm just saying. Think about it. Think about whether or not you want to outtask that. That might be a really helpful thing to do. If you're just like, you know what? I'm buying a house and I need to save every penny or I'm investing in this or that and I just can't be doing that. That's fine. Let's make it fun. I love uh, listening to music. I have a great friend of mine when we do blending. She'll listen to audiobooks while she's mopping or dusting. Okay, so she's learning while she's working. Okay, pop in your headphones and for that most detestable joy, uh, chore that you don't like, pop in your headphones, do your chore while you're doing that. You're learning or you're listening or you got dance music or something on. And then afterwards, reward yourself. If I do toilets, they are the very last thing. Thank God I have people in my life who don't mind doing those things and we trade chores for the chores that they don't like, I do, and the chores that they're fine with, you know, so. I can't, I can't tell you how wonderful it is to have other people do the chores when you just don't feel like doing it. <laughs> and you're just like, ah, I don't know that one. And then they'll do it. And it's like wonderful. But either way, as I was saying, if you absolutely have to do the chore, if I absolutely have to do that particular chore, that is the last chore on my list. Because once it's done, once I've listened to my music and just kind of got myself in a great space and I'm done with that chore, I immediately go reward myself with a very nice shower or bath. And both of those end up being incredible sensory experiences, okay? I'm either popping in the jacuzzi bath, in the bath with the jacuzzi and just enjoying sight and sound and the feel of, of that, uh, always with candles and something uh, aromatic, um, or it's a shower where I'm using something really, really nice that I normally wouldn't use. Like I said, my dish soap that I'm the only one that pretty much uses it because uh, I love it and it's a sensory experience for me. <laughs> um, same thing with the shower. You know, I'm using something that not anybody else is, is really using. It's something that I'm kind of saved for myself. And each person in our house has something similar to that. My daughter always gets these wonderful bath and shower gels and lotion combinations. You know what I'm talking about. People give her as gifts and she loves them. And that's her thing, okay? So that's her, her, her special sensory thing. So yeah, hopefully this was helpful to you and, and you're able to look at tackling the dishes and even your most hated chores from a sensory perspective. Okay. All right. So I'm going to end you guys first and I hope that you have a very blessed night on purpose. Take care.